to maintain our goal of being the best marketers that we can be, we have to take in this new technology because it's gonna be it's gonna be on us before we know it. Um, and it already is. Yeah, it, it already is. It already is. I'm telling you, 2019 is the year of voice. Welcome back to another episode of More Than Marketing. I'm your host, Arsha Mirsha, here with Nick Winnikoff today. Uh, we're going to be talking about voice search and uh, all the implications of AI and voice. It's coming to a, a household near you. Actually, you already have it in your uh, pocket, most likely, if you have you know, an Android or an any, iPhone. Any phone, really. Really, any phone. Yeah. You're talking to Siri, you're talking to Google, right? So you already got the AI, you're already doing voice uh, commands, and it's it's coming. It's, uh, it's you know, maybe next frontier. What would you say, Nick? Um, I think that uh, people are going to start having, having to uh, forget mobile because 2000, 2019 and 2020 are going to be the years of voice. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add to that. I think that you know how, like, today everyone's familiar with the keyboard, and they know how to type, and they took typing classes, right? The QWERTY keyboard, okay? Yeah. First off, there's another keyboard some people don't know about. I don't even know about it, but there is. I think that voice, um, or AI otherwise, is going to be the new keyboard. Like, you're going to have to know how to talk to your AI to get it to do the things that you want it to do, whether that's buy a product or text a friend or what have you. It's funny uh, watching my dad try to interact with Siri. Sometimes you can't get it to do what he wants it to do. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, you have to say this word and this, and you know, it's like, cause I've been practicing the keyboard, you yeah, know? Absolutely, so, absolutely. So anyway, but anyway, we're a, uh, you know, web mechanics, we're a marketing agency, you're a strategist here. Um, you're helping clients kind of uh, be on the forefront uh, of, of on the bleeding edge of, of these new technologies coming out. Voice search being one of them. I know you've done a ton of research. So what are the implications? Um, the implications are, are, essentially having to optimize for this stuff you know, yeah people people make decisions based off of their own preferences right and if you're not meeting those preferences um you know they're gonna find somebody who will and they're gonna i mean so easy to go from one place to the other on the internet you know sure. so um information is ubiquitous yeah exactly right it's, so. it's, you know they have the 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 80 20 rule where you know um like 20% of the 20% of the sites get 80% of the traffic, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if you're not competitive, you know it's so easy to go from you know Walmart.com to Amazon.com. Sure. You know, so uh, I think that making sure that your your customer experience and your user experience um, is very uh, is or your customer experience and user experience is um, has to be there yeah, optimized for, for a voice, voice. Um, or at least like. You know, a nod towards voice, right, right? Right. Now, is this only for? Would you say that this is only for like e-commerce or local companies? Because I, I can, like, what are if you're an e-commerce company, like, what are the implications? Um, the implications, I think, are that you just have to expand your expand your portfolio, really, because you know, the e-commerce versus now what they're calling the commerce is yeah, is going is going to be um, super important to uh, you know. To, to make a sale, you know, right. because if, if people are buying through voice, then you're going to have to optimize for voice or else right. you're not going to make that sale. Yeah, voice, yeah. So V commerce, V for voice, voice yeah. commerce. That's, uh, that's, that's good. That's interesting. And like local, you had a stat about local searches? Yeah. So um, let me pull it up over here. So uh, January 2018 had over 1 billion voice searches um, oh. and 40% 40, 40 of those were uh, local intent. Okay. So, How do they know local intent? They'll say so something like near. It has, uh, either has near me or some kind of geolocator. Uh -huh. So whatever city you're in, you know, like right, right, um, right. X Y Z in Baltimore, in Baltimore, X Y Z in Washington right, D.C. Right. Um, so that's how they're gonna. They're that's gonna prove crazy. Local intent. So yeah. billion searches. That's in a month. I mean, Google gets you know billions of searches a second. I, th I think mm -hmm. I forget the exact number, but yeah. but I think that 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 rate is increasing, right? Oh, exponentially. The voices. Is, so over this holiday season, what what happened over the holiday season? I know Amazon was fire sailing their their yeah. uh, their echoes. I don't know what Google was doing. Do you know? Yeah, so um Google Google discounted the Home Mini. Uh-huh. Um and Amazon Dang, I should have got one. <laughs> Amazon discounted the uh, uh the Echo Dot. Echo Dot yeah. Um they both charged around twenty twenty five dollars or so. Mm -hmm. Um and they were both the, the number one selling products for each company for the holiday season. How much are they normally if they're, if they're... um 
the normal, I think the Echo Docs are like 45 to 50, and okay. same with the so Echo like, Mini. So or with the Home Mini, sorry. Oh, so they're, they're like cutting it in half. Yeah, yeah they're, it, they're losing money. money. They're losing money. Yeah, um, the report that I, saw, that I saw said that to make an Echo Dot, it cost Amazon $31, and they were selling them for like twenty four ninety nine. Wow. Think about the implications of that, folks, right? You got these companies purposefully losing money on getting this hardware into your home. Why are they doing that? Why? It's got to be a long-term play. Absolutely. <laughs> business is not in, mu in, in business to, to lose money, right? No. Nope. This is a long-term play. They're willing to sacrifice the short-term for the long-term. That's how much these tech giants, Amazon and Google, believe in AI, believe in voice as uh, the new frontier or a new frontier. Absolutely. You would agree? Absolutely. I mean, the, the Alexa is built to sell, sell Amazon products. Sell Amazon products. That's the biggest one. If we're, if we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, it's, it's Amazon, right? Absolutely. They got the Echo. They got the Alexa. Um, it's, they got the, the buttons, the push button things. I forget what they call those, but it's like, you know, just making it super easy for you to buy. And, and more important, they have the products to sell. Right. Well, Google, of course. Right. Google doesn't have that. Right. They so. don't have the products. So the, but Google's teaming up with... Like other uh, retailers, right? Yeah. Like so, maybe. so um, uh, Google uh, Google allows you to buy from from different places like Costco, Kohl's, Staples, oh, wow. and the big one, obviously, Walmart's ever in competition mm -hmm. with Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, they sell over two million products on Google's home. Um, wow. All in all, uh, apparently, they have uh, 40, over forty retailers that sell through Google Home. Okay. Um, to uh, help Google compete with Amazon. Wow. So I think that like the e-commerce, I think I think it's easy for for every. I mean, I think everyone is, is easy to uh, grasp the e-commerce example of, of Amazon. I want to buy this thing. I buy it on a regular. Amazon knows whatever, so it's easy to buy, right? And Google, I think we could e-commerce. I think it's easy to grasp. I also think it's not a big leap to make to say like, yo, to give me hey Google, give me Chinese food near me or an auto repair shop near me. I think those. I think local searches e-commerce is pretty easy. Would you agree? Like it's sure. easy to grasp sure. that. I think yeah. everyone kind of sees implications there. Um, what about like um, I don't know, like a B two B or like a or like a, something that's not local or not e-commerce? Is there implications? Is there is it as important for them? I I don't I don't see that being as important. It's I, definitely not as important. I, I definitely see. I um, wouldn't invest all of your marketing budget into into no, voice, no, right? No, I definitely see B two C being the bigger play. Yeah, there. I'm gonna agree with you. Um, because I, I mean, it's 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 essentially for home. I mean, there's a reason why we don't have an office Alexa because that wouldn't make sense. Right. You know, so um, to have one in your home and have have it personally assist you, that makes a lot of sense. But to have it for for B two B doesn't. I mean, who knows? They could they could develop a reason for it, to have it for business to business, but it, to me, right now as it stands, it doesn't really make sense to do. B2B. I will say B2B. this though: it's so I agree with you. I don't like it's. If you're a B two B, you're not going to go pour all your budget and uh, and do have all your initiatives around voice search. But um, it's not bad to kind of take a look at it and make sure that you're 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 optimizing because if you're optimizing for voice, I think you're inherently optimizing for search engines. Would you? Yeah. Was yeah that, is that a fair that's, statement? That's not unreasonable, no. Right, because because it's kind of like doing keyword research, or in this case, key phrase, key phrase research, research, right? Because if yeah. you think about the way people think, they're gonna think, then they're gonna talk, right? Or first, people think and then they type right. into Google. Sure. And now it's gonna be thinking and then speaking. So really, it's it's all kind of related. You know, we had a client. Um, if you do a, if you ask Google. What are the unclaimed property deadlines, reporting deadlines in the state of Delaware? It's probably, it's, I think our client comes up and, and Google says, on the website, insert client name here, it says, right? So I think that there's a little bit of implication there because like, this is my belief, Nick, and you can, you know, tear it to shreds if you like, sure. but um, I think like this information, we're in the information age, information Absolutely. is everything. It's ubiquitous. Yeah. Everyone has access to it. It used to be that you have to go through a salesperson. Now it's you know eighty percent of the sales done before you even talk to someone uh, on sales, right? Or from sales. And so, um, if information is ubiquitous, then and voice is a vehicle to make it even more ubiquitous, even easier to get to it. Then you might want to be there, right? So I know with Google, 
Do you have a Google Home? Uh, I don't. I have the uh, an Amazon. Phone. You have uh, an Amazon. Okay. So I have a Google one, for instance, and like I'll be like, hey, uh, hey Google, and I'll ask it a question. They'll be like, on the website so and so dot com, and then it'll give me like what they say. Right. And then sometimes it says it, but sometimes it doesn't. It's like if you want more information, check your app. So then I can pull out my app on my phone and, then it'll bring and it I can to go to that website. Yeah. So now I've, yeah. It synergizes with your phone and synergizes with the mobile search. And that's search engine optimization Absolutely. for you. Right? That's, it's really cool. I love it. I love it too, man. I love it too. So yeah, so where do we go from here, man? Uh, how do we, how does someone go about optimizing for? Uh, um. So, voice? so I guess creating phraseologies to kind of match your products. Um, I know that there are uh, websites like I found the keyword IO okay. that you, you type in a keyword yeah, and keyword it'll give you, I love that. Yeah. give you like a list of 50 phrases. To okay. extend, it'll extend your keyword for you. Okay. Um, you know, because we're looking for more, uh, again, we're looking to optimize for more phraseology rather sure. than individual words. Um, and that's also to say that the, the technology is in it, in and of itself smart enough to understand what you're saying in a full phrase mm -hmm. rather than just saying yes or no. Like, right. you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago when you had uh, voice assistants, it only understood yes or no. Right. Like when you had um, uh, like like phone, phone like answering machines mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but now that they can fully understand what you're saying, it makes it even more important to uh, properly optimize your services mm -hmm. for that. I, I like it. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, uh, that, yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think that going back to this idea that like search engine optimization, like if you're optimizing for voice, you're kind of also inadvertently optimizing for search because, you know, when someone asks Google or Amazon something, effectively they're querying, right? Yeah. Effectively they're, they're doing a query, they're making a search. And so, you know, an implication I just thought about, Nick, um, in market audiences, so just taking me as an example, I have a baby due in two weeks, okay? Mm -hmm. I've been asking Google all types of baby questions just to see like what it knows. And it's constantly like, on the website this, on the website that, here's the answer to, to, your, to your query, right? To your, to your uh, question. And now when I log into YouTube on my laptop, because it's all one Google account, oh, oh. what does it say? It says, hey, Get a, a trial of YouTube TV, plenty of kids content in the library. I'm like, ah, it knows I'm about to be a they dad. Got they got you. They got yeah. me, right? Yeah. Google's smart, man. That's their AI. They can get that semantic. So you're just, so think about the millions and millions of consumers that are going to have these products in their homes. They're going to be asking questions. Those tech giants are capturing that and bucketing you as a, as a in-market, you know, audience and, us oh, so as as advertisers can target that. Yeah, absolutely. And what's also important, um, I think that was kind of noteworthy, was uh, because it's AI and it can essentially think for itself, um, it's going to get rid of many black hat SEO tricks that yeah. you can pull. So you're not going to be able to spam backlinks anymore. You're not going to be able to overstuff your your content with keywords, right. that kind of stuff. It'll be able to tell what you're, what you're doing. Um, That's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, I don't, I, I it's a very good agree, thing. I definitely agree with that. I would um, agree, yeah, it's big time. It's, it's, it's noteworthy, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool, super cool. All right, so let's see. So major tech companies, do you have any, what other stats do you have? I think the stats are really interesting. What other stats? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so I think, um, I, because you know we we touched on how Amazon was losing or was losing money on sales, and I'm I'm assuming Google's the same way. Mm -hmm. um, because they were trying to over the holiday, they were definitely trying to uh, create that impulse buy scenario. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had two Amazon Echo Dots go in our uh, in our white elephant gift exchange. Mm -hmm. That's because, true. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, it, it fit the price. And it fit the like, price why range. Not? Easy. Why not? Sure. Um, so. That's true. When when you're when you're when you're talking about tech giants, it's it's important to see. Um, how they're they're trying to how they're uh, approaching yeah uh, and I think it's all about uh, being the native the native app on on the system okay. it's all about apathy you know be, mm. like why does Google why does Google cut uh, Apple why is, or sorry why is Google cutting Apple a 19 billion dollar check so that they're the main the default search engine mm -hmm. on on the mm -hmm. iPhone right because it's worth it to them yeah, it's because, worth it to them right because people don't care about switching preferences that's right because um, they get that data really yeah I mean, and it's the same I mean it's far. the same thing with Bing you right. know if you if I asked you right now like is Bing a success right. you'd be like I don't know I don't use it right. um, but they are because 
80% of computers run Microsoft Windows. Mm -hmm. And, and that's Bing the default is the, search. Default. And ain't no one changing that. It's all apathy. And not ain't no one. I mean, some people are, right? No, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. So what I think is super interesting, interesting. when it comes to, to tech giant competition is Apple. Mm -hmm. Because Apple is creating a device that is specifically for music. Mm -hmm. They're putting a high-quality speaker, mm -hmm. high-quality microphone. Um, the only problem is their, their base product is coming out at $349. Holy smokes. Exactly. Amazon's Echo, their base product is $99 full retail, and Google Homes is $129. Mm. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. Is that the Google Home or is it the, uh, the one with the speaker? It's the, that's like the, 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 the self-standing yeah, 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 you don't got have it. to connect to your phone. Or right, whatever. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, home then, yeah. So, I mean, naturally, Apple's making a better quality machine. Yeah, but right. That's what they tend to do. But, but like, honestly, who cares if it's three times the price? Right. You know, so and they don't have anything to sell on Apple because right. you know they, they, they have, have their the Apple, right? Apple like products, Amazon. but they don't have anything to sell. Wow, crazy. Yep. Wow. Okay. How about actionable? Like, if I'm a you know CMO or if I'm a VP of marketing, director marketing, whatever, right? Um, what do I do, man? What do I do today? Um. Or tomorrow. So. It obviously depends what you're selling. Yeah, it um, depends on the business. Sure, let's, let's, yeah, absolutely. Let's, obviously, yeah. let's put that out there. But if if you're any kind of B2C, uh, B2C business, you have to start testing the waters because you're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, I was we were talking earlier about native advertising to to like the Alexa or the mm -hmm. Google Home, where you say um, for whatever you know, like Amazon or Alexa, buy me paper uh, towels. Buy me paper towels. Yeah, and then it says. Sure, you're ordering paper towels. Also, do you know Domino's is having a special this week? Mm. You know, how is that going? Oh to wow, yeah. So native actual advertising. Yeah. Throughout, mm. wow. And and like I like I was telling you earlier, um, only about ten point eight percent of people surveyed are saying they're completely one hundred percent against that. Wow. As opposed to the thirty eight point two people who say that they would be welcome that as long as the ads were directly relevant, relevant to them. This from eMarketer. eMarketer. Okay. Com. Yeah. That's very interesting, and I, and I, you know, I, I guess I personally would agree. I, I actually like ads, not just because I'm a marketer and, and I like to see the creativity and who's advertising where, when, why, and what their message is, but more so, I mean that yes, but also I like personally, to, I, I learn of new services, I learn of new products that way, new you know? ways to do things, new ways to do things. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I bought, I bought so many different things, uh, tools for for the agency and just different things, just from getting hit with relevant ads. So I welcome that too. Yeah, you know? I, I think it's definitely going, going to be a positive. I'm in that majority. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So to speak. Yeah. No, it's really cool, man. So what does it mean for your job? Um, so for my job, uh, I think that we're going to have to start taking uh, voice into more of, a, of an account. More um, into consideration. Yeah. You're more into consideration. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to start ta targeting um, – you know, if we're if I'm ever working on a, a B2C consumer, we're gonna have to start tar uh, targeting localized uh, keywords. I agree. Such as um, near me yeah, or near anything anything with a uh, geo indicator sure. of location to where you yeah. are. Um, you know, and we're to to maintain our to maintain our goal of being the best marketers that we can be. We have to take in this new technology because it's gonna be it's gonna be on us before we know it. Um, and it already is. Yeah, it already is. It already is. I'm telling you, 2019 is the year of voice. Yeah. The there here. Uh, I got another a fun stat for you saying um, there was 91 million units in American households of voice assistants. Okay. They're expecting that number to jump to 105.8 million by 2020. So, so I mean, when was that? 91 when? 91 is 2018. Okay. Um, and there's gonna it's gonna make that jump to 105. So we're looking. I, I don't I don't know exactly how many households are in the United States, but there's 300 million people. So if you're if you're saying one voice assistant per, per uh, three people, like right. that doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Right. That's or like houses. Yeah, it's pretty or saturated. Household almost right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? I also think I, I wouldn't. It's funny because uh, Apple when they came out with the iPod. Um, the, the market didn't give them that much credit for it, like the stock market, right? Sure. And then until it realized this was like how many years ago? This is before the 2007. iPhone. 2007. Yeah. That, that area. I think it was before even the iPhone. Okay. Because um, it was interesting because people were like, oh, yeah, people are just going to buy one and that's it and it's not that high. But really what ended up happening is people bought multiple iPods, little ones, because they wanted the different colors. So, you know, the, the street 
quote unquote, the, the market didn't realize that, that that was going to be the consumer's behavior. Uh, playing along with that trend and just thinking about myself, and maybe I'm kind of an early adopter, but I personally will, I already have Google Home. I have two units in my house. I will, I'm a big user of Amazon. I'll probably get a dot. I actually have a dot. I just haven't set it up. So I'll probably get a dot, maybe a, uh, uh, an Alexa. You, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's not like I have a home. I'm not going to get Amazon's product, right? right? Um, see, I, I, just saying. Yeah. Um, and so also another, another interesting point uh, going back to Apple is um, if you have an Echo Dot, mm -hmm already and it works for you at that 25 to mm -hmm. $50 price point, are you then going to throw that out and get uh, an Apple product at 350 No. Or are you going to have both of them? Or yeah. are you going to stick with your Alexa? Yeah. I mean, I personally think I would probably stick with the Alexa, but you know, you never know. So so this is what I would say to businesses out there. I don't care who you, what, what your business is. Like the steps are basically just recognize what it, it basically comes back to keyword research. It comes back to search engine optimization, keyword research, uh, key phrase research. Look for the questions that people are asking around your product or service. That's typically going to be the voice. Like that's how we interact with voice. You know, we, we ask questions. Typically, that's what I've mm -hmm. seen at least, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, or, or a command like, you know, make me a reservation at an Italian restaurant. I see 10 Italian restaurants. Would you like to go to wherever, you know? But so first is that is that research. What questions are people asking around my product or service? And then do I have uh, those questions and answers on my website Yep. to start? And, and, I think and it, are they optimized for voice? All right, so how do you optimize them for voice? Like is there an HTML way to optimize them for voice? Uh, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. I, I don't think that, I don't think that there's a schema for it, but if there is, we'll be the first to tell you, right? Absolutely. Um, so, but I know that you can do, uh, with Alexa, you can, I know with Google, you can create apps for it. I know with Alexa, you can give it RSS feeds and also create apps for it, basically giving it an RSS feed. So I can say, I believe this works on Alexa today. People out there, hey, try this. Say, what's the latest news from web mechanics on your on your Echo Dot or, or your Alexa? I believe it will read you our uh, our most recent blog post. Yeah, because you can make a skill for it. Yeah, so that's, that's what we did, mm -hmm. right? So you want to understand, you want to basically do keyword and key phrase re research. And then look, if you're like a... Um, well, it doesn't matter what you are. FAQ pages are great places oh, yeah. to huge, house answers to that. Huge. Yeah, I think right? that's going to be absolutely big for them. Easy, easy. For, for everyone, really. That's That could be a B2B, up, a huge B2B. There's your B2B, B2B angle, B2B. right? Yeah. Just give me an FAQ page. Yeah. Bang. So here's what people search. Here's the answer. And maybe you do it in some... Uh, I'm sure there's markup for it. I, I can't believe I didn't look this up before getting on this podcast. There's definitely markup for it. If there isn't, you know, make your markup, like, wise, right? So div class equals question... Uh, div and you know class equals answer right I'm right. Right. and then how's that all in you know one div that's what I would do if I was, yeah absolutely right. yeah so, that makes total sense yeah. cool man this is awesome yeah. any uh any other follow up or parting thoughts on this no no I think we covered everything we covered it it's it's, it's yeah, coming it's about. here already yep v-commerce is huge yeah v-commerce is huge you're probably already using it if you're not and I think Nick you were telling me also Consider the long-term effects of this um, and consider the generations. Like if, if let's say, our parents are talking to Siri, um, you know, we are and our kids. Even more so. Even more so will be. Yep. So that's, you know, this this is, yeah, it's short-term. we got to start thinking about it, but also consider the long-term implications. Yep. I mean, uh, I, I think I mentioned this one to you that um, – uh, v commerce rose by 43.3% amongst people 18 to 29 years old. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, over 17? Right, right. Um, 40 some percent? Yeah, and uh, and that's again according to eMarketer. And obviously, those those stats or that percentage kind of lowers as you get older because, like I was saying, yeah. the, the, the right. adoption of, of this technology by older folks. But see, I personally have never bought uh, anything uh, in 2018 via voice, but I bet you in 2019 that I will. So I bet that stat actually goes up. I think it will, I think that growth will accelerate with yeah. time. And we can do a, we can do a follow-up podcast next let's, year and let's, figure, figure let's it out. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Voice search, AI, it's here. It's going to come harder, faster, stronger, better. 
Absolutely. You know, if you're a B2C, if you're local, very important. If you're a B2B, use it as an excuse to refresh your uh, 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 keyword research and key phrase research and your secondary keywords that you're optimizing for Absolutely. on your sites. Nick, thank you so much. Thank Put you it here so much. Cheers. Very cool. Subscribe. See you next time. Thank you.